In today's video, I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of Ableton's built-in reverb so you can really understand exactly what the different controls on this device do. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of live performance software with building a stable live keyboard rig and with mastering sound design. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so let's jump into Ableton's reverb. So for this demo, I'm gonna just be using a, a really basic saw wave. I'm using Thor to make that wave. There's nothing on it. Um, but it's just a really good way to kind of hear what the reverb does. And then, of course, I've got the reverb down here. So uh, let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so it does some stuff, right? But what exactly does what? Which things are happening here? Uh, I'm gonna turn as much off as I can, and we're gonna go through control by control. Okay, so first things first, we've got this pre-delay here. And what this button does is it controls how long it takes for the reverb to kick in. So at low values, it's gonna start right away, right? 0.5 milliseconds. If I turn it up to 250, and you listen close, you're not gonna hear the reverb start for a little bit. So here, listen. And generally speaking, the higher pre-delays make it sort of sound like your sound source is being pushed further away from you. All right, so that's our pre-delay here. Now, a lot of times on instruments that have a, a really hard attack. Uh, you want to give a little bit of pre-delay so the attack comes through. Um, but when you're making synthesizers or you're uh, trying to alter a piano sound, it doesn't really matter what you do with your pre-delay as long as you like the sound it makes. So let's check out this input processing here. All this is doing is it's taking out any parts of the signal that you don't want to hear in the reverb. So this would sort of be the same thing as dropping an EQ in front of it, but it's built in. So as I bring this up, you hear only the high end things there. You can kind of hear that, right? And as I swing this open, more of the sound is included, and I can do the same the other way. I almost never use the high cut, but I actually kind of dig that sound. So that's your input processing, and you're kind of just deciding how you want to color your reverb, right? Do you want a warmer reverb with, um, you know, warmer tones in the low and the low mids, or do you want something that's a little crispy? Um, you can pick here with the input processing. Um, okay, so let's talk about these early reflections. So these are a bit of a mystery, <laughs> or they have been a bit of mystery for me. Um, and this is the way that I like to think about it now. It's like the early reflections are the first parts of the reverb, and then the diffusion network and everything after, those are the other parts. So these are like the first sounds that are bouncing off of the wall. And Ableton gives us the ability to uh, alter them. Okay, to change uh, the speed a little bit. So make this really extreme here and we can listen. So I'm pulling down all of the reflections. This is just, uh, oops, I should do it this way. So you can kind of hear what's happening, right? We've got none of the tail, but just the early reflections. And it's sort of messing with the detuning of those early. Uh, but it does add a good amount of character, right? So when I put the regular diffusion back in and put this normal, you do get that detuning, you get that character, but maybe you don't um, hear it, but you feel it, right? Here, listen. And I mean, in this case, it's pretty extreme, so you do still hear it. And I might just even pull this down a bit. That's a cool sound. And remember, this is what we started with. So it really does add uh, some interesting stuff. 
shape down here works a little bit backwards to how you would think it should work. So as we turn this up, we're going to get things decaying faster. The early reflections are going to die out faster. So let's have a listen. At the smaller values, there's a little bit more cutoff. I encourage you to try this at home because I'm getting the feeling of touching the key, but you're maybe just hearing the sound, so definitely worth uh, giving this a go on your own a bit as well. So this kind of controls how much you want these early sounds to play with the later sounds, right? If you don't want it a lot, you can go high. If you do want, you go low. Um, I kind of like these sounds to mingle a little bit with the diffusion network, so I am going to leave this shape here at about 0.35. Um, and, you know, you can do this to taste. Okay, so moving right along here, we have this global area, and the first thing that is set up here is quality. Now, eco, or like economy mode, technically makes the reverb run lighter, which is all well and good. I actually also think it sounds more interesting. Um, so I'm going to put high quality mode. Eco, it's got more color. It just sounds good. Now, if you're wanting something that's really clean, I get it. Go with the high quality mode. But I actually use economy mode on almost everything because I like the color. Um, size is controlling the size of your room, okay? So think about the way a warm sound would be if you were in like a big cathedral, right? Big sounds, uh, big room sizes tend to be a little bit warmer. I should turn this up so you can actually hear it. I'll pull out the early reflections. And... So here's a huge room. Here's a small one. Right, so if a sound was going off in like a little box, you get that sort of uh, metallic-y, quick reverberation bouncing off the walls. So... Larger size, larger room size. And the size of your room is just really going to depend on what you're trying to do. Sometimes I put this all the way up, sometimes I really have to play with it. Um, this stereo just controls uh, if your ears get the same signal or not. So if we bring it down here, this is going to be completely mono. And I use that word lightly, but it's going to send the same reverb signal to both sides of the the meter. So check this out. If I go all the way up to stereo, we're getting a little bit of different on each side. This isn't a huge deal. Um, just if you want to have things bouncing a little bit differently from side to side, turn your stereo. Okay. Decay time controls how long it takes when there's no more input coming in for it to go to silence. So I'm going to set this at uh, five seconds just to demo it and you'll be able to hear what I'm talking about. So uh, dry wet all the way up. I'm going to just hit a note and lift. Okay, so that's your decay time. Now, when you have the original in there, um, you can kind of get some interesting things. Because as you change notes, those old notes are still taking time to die out, right? So on a pad sound, you could go pretty high. You could go as high as five or six seconds. <laughs> That's kind of sounding a bit insane here. I think we get a, get rid of a little bit of this modulation on the early reflections. It's very buzzy, so input processing at work here. So that's our decay time. Now, the diffusion network here, right? This is how we're shaping the tail, okay? We've got the early reflections, the first things that hit off the wall. Now we're talking about the things that happen after that, right? You drop a book on the floor in a room and you hear that original popping sound. Then I'm talking about everything after that first sound here. So this is another EQ. It's gonna let you really shape the sound. So early reflections are down here. Um, diffusion network, let's... 
shape of the sound here. So... can really hear it. It makes a major difference, right, on, on the reverb tone overall. You can have both on at the same time if you really want to limit it to a particular area. Um, but you're really just getting the sound of a filter here, right? I'll put these reflections back up. It's cool. When you do that, you start to hear that early sound, that early detuning. Sort of then going into the diffusion network. And I liked this kind of really pulling a lot out of the top. Okay. So, uh, this freeze button is pretty cool, so if I press some notes and hit freeze, it just kind of repeats that uh, forever, which is a really nice feature. So flat and cut both have to do with how freeze is going to behave. So when flat is turned on, it's going to bypass your diffusion network filtering, um, which might be useful if you're trying to not have too much control over that. I'll be honest, I usually leave it on, um, but maybe you want to play with that. Um, let's let's hear what happens. Okay, so here's with flat on, here's with it off. Yeah, so it does, it does, it makes a huge difference, right? W with this going on here, with flat turned off, when you turn freeze on, it really shapes the sound a good amount. Um, when it's on, It brings up that everything that's been cut out here. Um, so if you want your diffusion network to remain true when you turn freeze on, you're going to want that. And cut is actually really important. So cut means that you cannot add anything to a frozen signal. So um, here we are. I'm playing, um, but you're not hearing anything. You probably would hear it, though. Yeah. So here's a better demo of this. Okay, so here's the frozen signal. Now, cut is on, so... I can play over the top of that frozen sound uh, without adding to it. If cut is turned off, that is not the case. So, when I add... It adds to it. Now, that may be something that you want. It may not. It kind of depends on your use case. Um, this is a really easy way, though, if you're playing keyboard live, to just create, like, uh, a pad um, that just stays. And then you can still use your sound. And if it's a fully built-out keyboard setup, this could be nice. Okay, so chorus is what it sounds like, okay? This is creating a chorusing effect on your wet signal. So let's uh, have a listen here. I'll pull the early reflections down. I can bring this up. This is gonna control my rate, and this is my amount. I really like this just over one. Okay, with the early reflections. And here's no chorus. That sits really nice right about there. Now you can play with it depending on what you want. I'm using just a, you know, basic waveform. So depending on what you're using, this is going to change a little bit. Now, you've seen me use this quite a bit already in this tutorial, but reflection and diffusion, this controls the volume of the two separate parts. So, uh, reflect controls the volume of your early sounds, and diffusion controls the volume of your uh, diffusion network. We've got the dry and wet, which controls the ratio of signal that's not being processed, or in other words, just my wave, right? And wet being only the processed signal. Um, and then we've got these two guys here, which is density and scale. 
So density and scale. Density, I like to think of density as like size, okay? Or like thickness. It is what it says. So as we turn this up, the diffusion network is going to get more populated maybe? Here, uh, have a listen. Okay, and scale is sort of like changing the size of those grains. So as we come up, we're going to have more grains. It's going to be a little darker. As we go down, less grains, a little bit. Uh, lighter like that. So reverb can be really useful. Now, I want you to check out how I use reverb in a live keyboard setup. Uh, and also, if you're looking for another take on live performance software, definitely have a look at Gig Performer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time at livekeyboardist.com.